Hi everyone, this is Etho. Thank you for joining me today. I have a very special tutorial for you. This is for an idea I came up with yesterday that I'm quite proud of. I think it's a new and original design, I hope. And you can see there's a boat involved, so you know it's going to be good. This is for what I'm calling a bud switch, which stands for a block update detector switch, or you could also call it buds, I suppose. And it's roughly 4 by 4 by 2 in size, and it allows you to convert any block update adjacent to this water source block into a redstone signal. It's a mouthful, I know. I'll be showing you how to build this bud switch shortly, but before I do, I should probably demonstrate how it works and also show you some potential uses for it, because at the moment I doubt you have very much interest in actually building it. So, uh, the way this works is anytime a block adjacent to this water block, so say to the left, to the right here, over here, or in front, above or below, such as this soil block here, anytime any of those six blocks gets updated, so if I put a block here, it'll cause this water to update. Then it realizes it can flow to the right here. That lifts this boat off of a pressure plate, which then sends a signal to these pistons, which uh, causes them to reset this water current. Which then causes the boat to sink back onto the pressure plate, which resets the whole thing. But as it's doing this, it's sending a little bit of a redstone pulse. So watch this light. Off, on. So this is very cool because it allows you to uh, use any block in the game that updates as a redstone switch, basically. It allows you to control redstone with it. So I'm going to show you some of the cool ways I've found of using this now. This is probably my favorite use for it. Right now I have this furnace connected to a bud switch, so when I give it something to smelt, let's say I'm going to smelt five cobblestone, I will make it four. What happens is, uh, once the furnace starts up, it causes a block update, which uh, triggers the water to flow, and uh, I have a little note block sequence hooked up to the redstone circuit, so that's why you heard that uh, alarm there. So this functions as an oven timer. We've got one block left if, we, if we're away doing something. Wait for it. went off. There, we have a little timer telling us that uh, our furnace has finished uh, smelting whatever we put in it, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at the guts for this thing. I built this yesterday, so I hope I don't wreck anything. There it is. You can hide it relatively well. looking for, there it is. So this is where it branches off and we can do whatever we want with the redstone signal. And it's just going to my sloppy setup for these uh, note blocks here. Ah! Yeah, anyway, that's what it does. Uh, you could also hook this redstone wire up to a T flip-flop if you wanted and you could set it so that it only plays your musical tone when it's finished smelting the goods instead of when it starts and finishes you know you can uh, you can do some fancy stuff with the redstone as well to have different effects here's a better uh, cut open look of it working uh, we'll try smelt one thing Thank you. 
And then when it finishes, the same thing happens again. Just like that. Here's another really cool way of using a bud switch that I thought of. Right now I have a sugar cane growing here. This is a very rough sugar cane farm I just put together now. And we have one sugar cane plant acting as a control. So when this final reed, or fi sorry, final sugar cane grows here, it'll cause the water to update, and that way it will know that the sugar cane has fully grown. And then it sends a signal to the rest of the plants, and they all get harvested. So it's fully automatic. And then these pistons here will remove the top two blocks of our control sugar cane, and the process starts over again. Just like that. And yes, it is a crummy sugar cane farm. But fully automatic, pretty cool. It's also possible to send redstone pulses using wheat growth. So when you first place wheat down, it causes an update. That's the first pulse. Every stage of growth will also do that. So here's an example of going to full growth. And then when you harvest it, it also causes an update. So a wheat would actually have eight different states from starting to being harvested. So you could keep track of the wheat growth using a 3-bit memory unit out of redstone. And you could keep track using digital methods the size of your wheat without even looking at it. So if you want a fun project, if you love redstone, that's another way you could use this, even though it's very impractical. Uh, some other things this will detect include grass spreading to a soil block next to it. So if grass appeared on the soil block, this would update. Uh, it'll detect leaves dying, detects block placement and destruction, just like that. Uh, doors. So every time I open and close this door, it'll update. And also, there's lots of blocks that update, really. Another one is uh, trapdoors. So in this case, the trapdoor is above the water source block, so you can do above and below, as well as on the sides here. Uh, here's another one I just thought of, actually. I'm pretty sure it will detect uh, farmland placement and destruction. That's placement and destruction. Yeah. So you can use it to detect uh, player movement, mob movement, because when uh, someone walks on farmland without holding down shift, it will destroy it. Right now I'm holding shift. Oh! Oh! also detects when it's being watered, I guess. Holding down shift, it's fine. If I move around without shift, it gets destroyed. That's kind of cool. I'm also guessing it can be used to detect fire. Yep. Fire extinguishing, and one thing I want to try is falling sand. but it will detect if the sand lands. Another thing I want to point out that it won't do is uh, it won't detect tree growth. So when you place a sapling it will update, but when it actually grows on its own, or if you make it grow yourself, 
it doesn't update. Another one I'm trying for the first time right now is whether or not it'll detect if you go to sleep in a bed. So hopefully I can go to sleep here. Oh, it does. That's cool. And when you wake up... Yep. Cool. A few other possible uses that I haven't tried myself yet uh, may be or may not be detecting snowfall. Um, you might be able to detect uh, mushroom spreading, uh, flower and tall grass placement, stuff like that. When 1.8 comes out, you could probably detect pumpkin growth, maybe. But again, I have no idea. Okay, on to the final one I'm going to show you. One of my favorites as well is the redstone ore block. Uh, this is an interesting block because you can activate it by left or right clicking on it or by walking on it. Left click. When activated, it stays on for a random amount of time and then shuts off. Right click. So if you attach this to a T flip flop, you essentially have a lever that looks like a redstone or a block and walking on it. Kind of cool. This one would be especially good for making traps because you could easily disguise it as stone in a dark area. And when the player walks over it, you won't hear a clicking noise like you do if you walk over a pressure plate. But if you are using it as a trap, you probably don't want to have these pistons to reset the thing. Because if you're going to be blowing stuff up with TNT, you don't need to reset it anyway. You just have the water flow and uh, power a circuit. Uh, with these pistons, you can hear them from 16 blocks away, and then you don't they get quieter the further away you are. If you're over 16 blocks away from a piston, you won't hear them at all. But there is no way of avoiding having them close to the block that's updating. You have to have them next to it. And I should probably quickly mention about this redstone block, because my viewers are probably wondering, no, I did not hack it in. I actually took the effort and moved it up from bedrock all the way up here using pistons and that's how I got it up here. By now I'm hoping I've uh, grabbed your interest in making your own bud switch. Uh, I just want to quickly give mention though to two ideas I've gotten from other people, two components of this thing. First of all we have the water updating trick that was popularized by Kirshar. I'll link his video in the description where he showed that. And also this boat thing here is my compact version of Rabbit's water sensor. So I'll link his video as well for, for you guys to check out if you wish. Awesome. Now we finally move on to the actual tutorial. So you're going to need a wooden pressure plate, a boat, a water source, two pistons, one repeater, some redstone dust, one redstone torch, tools, yeah. Okay, so this is just a reference for you guys. You don't have to build yours exactly like me, and you can do your redstone wiring different too if you need to, but this is how I've been building mine. Uh, make, a, make a shape like this in the ground or wherever you're building. Just like this. Okay. Uh, then place your pistons. Make sure they're on their side. And you can place your pressure plate here. Okay. Uh, redstone torch goes over here. Your repeater goes over here. It cannot be set at one or two, it has to be three or four, at least. I use, I set mine to three. And 
Then we have redstone here, here, and here. Then we, oh yeah, we need to place our boat. So you can't place it directly in that 2x2 two two space down here. You need to place it above and then push it in. Doesn't really matter how you place it in, it'll align itself. And then you need to place at least one block over top it. And you'll need to place a block here. And one above this redstone torch. Okay, so this redstone torch here sends power to this wire and this repeater. It also sends power to this soil block here, which sends power to this redstone dust. This redstone dust then sends power to this soil block, which powers this piston, so it's pretty efficient. Okay, finally, place your water block right here. And that's it. You can cover up more, of course. You will need to keep air blocks uh, in front of these two pistons here, though. Yeah. And that's how you do it. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration and this tutorial. And I hope you can find many creative uses for your own bud switches. I think it'll be especially useful for people that like making traps or that uh, make custom maps. I think you could uh, make some fun puzzles out of them. And of course there's general Minecraft use like I showed the oven timer there and things like that so it's a pretty good idea I think. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I forgot to mention this, but I should probably show you where you can connect your redstone circuitry to this thing. Uh, there is a few places. Uh, one of them, you can go in front like this if you want. Uh, you can go to the left here. And you can also connect in the back here. You must leave a block over this redstone torch. But you can connect uh, to over here if you want. And over here. So there's a few places. If it doesn't work, you probably connect it in a bad spot. 